Hi and welcome. I'm John and this is Unico Gaming Touring. Guys, welcome back. For everyone that's new, this is a Let's Build video. What are Let's Build videos and what they're all about? Well, Let's Build video, I take a model kit and I show you how to put it together. If there's any areas of concern on the sprue, as in things on the sprue and number definitely to the instructions, I give you guys a heads up and let you know. If there's any parts of the sprue where it's changed pipes, and if you have to be careful of snipping off, I'll let you know. If there's any part of the model piece that you're taking off the sprue that has a one some like weird shape on it that needs to stay on there because it's like a pin, I'll give you guys a heads up. If you suffer with dyslexia or struggle with instructions in general, again, use the visual aid to help you. If you're interested in models for an army that you have or that you want to collect, again, this is a visual aid to help you. So for all my regulars here, guys, I would love thank you very much. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I have, this is the last box of Eldari that I have at the moment. So I thought to myself, let me get this glued up and done. Because then that's all the Eldari I have. And then it was a bit more incentive for me to maybe pick up another box of this or a box of that. So as you can see, we're seeing for the thumbnail, put in Wraith Guard. Now I do believe these could be Wraith Guard or they can be... Um, Wraith blades, I think they're called. Yeah, wraith blades. With, look at that axe. That's amazing. Or just a normal blade on it. So I'm going to pop this open. I'll go through tools as needed, as always, and then look at the sprue. Right, before we uh, start looking at the sprue, let's go through tools needed, as always. Mold line scraper. Now you can use a hobby knife or some sort of surgical blade. If you're using a sharp tool, just be careful because it's sharp. Let anyone in the house know you're using a sharp tool, so nobody scares you by accident. Make sure you, if you have cats, make sure they're nowhere near you or little hands. Clippers, most useful part of our kit. Now I do have sanding sponge. You can have sanding sponge or sanding block. It's basically sponge with sandpaper either side. This is perfect for getting into chains, pipes, any little nooks and crannies that you can't really get into with this guy. Or even for when you finish building the model and you go, oh, look, I missed a bit there, I missed a bit there. This is perfect. Here's a plastic kit. So plastic glue, I do have super glue at hand just in case. So if everyone that's new now, what we do is we have a look at the sprues and that's the tame what's what, because this is three sprues on this kit. So there's quite a lot. So by doing that, you're able to really break down what everything is to make it a little bit easier for yourself. So on the first sprue, we've got the Wraith Blade weapons. There's loads of them here, look, axes and blades absolutely lovely we've got some head the head there that's one of the heads that looks like another part that probably clips into the head yep so i'd say that goes in there because there's a little uh, pinhole there to pass the time it's going to looks like the, the bit that goes on his back maybe mistaken i'm not sure but it looks like the the wraith bone thing that goes on the back of them legs there's the wraith wraith cannon i think it is and the I don't know what that one is. I know they can have a D cannon, I think it's in a Wraith cannon. There's arms, there's shoulder shoulder pieces, I think. Body parts. Now this is exactly what I thought it would be. A little T section, but the leg would slot into it either side. Yeah. And by the looks of the body, because it's curvature. Yeah, it's curvature. I would say that that sits on top. But that's the first sprue. So the second sprue. Pretty much the same sort of stuff. Bodies, legs, guns, arms. Now with the arms, you can see there's already a hand on the gun, one holding it. So I'd imagine that this one, just for example, would slot into there to hold the, the gun. But that's an amazing weapon, look here. And seeing the artwork work on the box, this is all a uh, weapon is all black with like little looks like grey trim around the edges. So it'd be very interesting to paint this, especially with all just soldiers on there. Just say, did I just say soul gems? I'm thinking of Skyrim. <laughs> so I, I can't remember what the, what the gems are called, but they do trap the Odari souls when they die, so they don't stop them, stop Slanesh getting them. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. 
this piece here. But I think this is some sort of shield that they can have that might only be able for the Wraith Blades. But anyway, it's pretty much the same sort of thing. Guns. These are tabard bits that hang down in front of them. Absolutely fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is finish the set up and come back to you for the first pieces. Okay, so straight off the bat, this is nice and easy. This piece here is number 11, okay? But it's telling me there is five pieces like that on the sprues. They are 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then this piece here is number 16. But it's telling me there's five of these pieces, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Any one of these pieces goes with any one of these pieces. So I'm going to snip these two pieces off first of all, clean the, these two down, I'll show you how they go together. Right, so it's very straightforward. This piece comes around like this, it just slots in over the top there like that. So you're left with this amazing, already you can see how it's coming together. So that's that first one. There's another four of those to do. So. There's three, four more of this top part and four more chest pieces. They don't seem to be on the same sprue. I think they're scattered across the three sprues. So I'm going to snip each of, each of those off and clean them all down and glue them together the same way. Now, it doesn't matter. It's any one of those you can use with any one of the other one. So there's no panic on it, okay? Right, so the next piece that's needed is number 18, which is this piece. Now, there's five of these scattered across the sprues. So it doesn't matter which one of these goes on these because they're all the same. So I'm going to snip this one off, clean it down. I'll show you how this one goes on. And then I'll just put the rest of them on afterwards. Right, so number 18 just slots on over the top, the back there, like so. So the two shoulder pad bits line up. Okay. And that's it. So I'm going to glue it together and clean the rest, the other 18s off and glue them on. I'll come back for the next piece then. Now yeah, there's two things I want to bring to your attention here. The first thing is, be careful of these pieces on the side. I nearly broke a few of them off. There's pieces on this, these ones and there's pieces on number 18 as well. Just be careful because I need broke, broke them on big hands. The other thing is, focus things I can show you. Before you glue this part, which is number eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, onto the front body part, just here and this side, there's a little bits of pip sprue. Just make sure you get those, because I mean, I I know it's still on all of them after I start gluing them on, and that just pushes this off slightly. I'll show you what I mean. So when I when I put this piece on, it doesn't want it to sit properly. Yeah. So I literally have to, I mean, that's that's not too bad, but the other one was worse. So we try and get it off as much as you can before you get on. But if you do have a little bit like I have on there, a bit of plastic glue on there will just melt it away. Right, so the next pieces we need are these guys. Okay, now there's nine, there's five of them, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Okay, so this sprue has number 19 on it and number 21. Yeah, so I'm going to snip one, I'm going to snip number 19 off, clean it down, I'll show you how it goes on. I'll then snip the rest of them all off the different sprues, clean them down and just glue them all straight on and come back to the next piece. Right, this is very straightforward. Any one of these goes in any body. So I've just picked up a random body, it just slots in the back there like so. Nice and easy. So I'm going to clean the rest of them off, glue them glue them onto and then come back for the next pieces. Right, so the next piece we need is number one and number two. Okay, so I'm going to sit down, clean them down, I'll show you how they go together, but then you repeat this uh, four other times, so there's five of them that can be the same. You guessed, you guessed what way they're going to go, but I'll show you anyway. Right, so number two and number one. Number two has the hole underneath, which I always said at the beginning, that just slots top of there like so okay so i'm going to glue that into place i'm going to snip the other four off and glue them into place and then come back to you for the next piece 
Right, so now we're on to this piece. Okay, so now I thought there'd be five of these all the same and the legs go into the... No, they're not. They are separate. They are different. I think it's, I think the little squares on the side there where the legs go into is a slightly different angles in each one. So what we need is number 24, 29 and 30. See how they're all together there like this? Very nice. So I'm going to sit those three pieces off, clean them down, and I'm going to show you how they go on. Right, so this is very straightforward. Obviously, it's number 30. There's only one way these legs can go on. There's a square hole and a square pin, and it just goes on. Okay, so I'm going to, and the other one goes the other side. So I'm going to glue these on and then glue them onto the base. That's what it's telling me to do. Now, the reason you glue it onto the base is because if you glue it on and it's slightly wonky, you've got time to, to maneuver it so it's in the position of standing both feet have a point of contact on the floor then. Right, so I've glued him on his base. You're going to want to glue the legs on and leave that to dry. But see, the way the instructions are telling me, there's another piece that goes on this guy next. Okay. But whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to move on to the next guy. So the next guy I'm going to put here, I'm just going to glue legs to the little middle piece and then keep going through and then glue the little tab hard piece on and glue into the base. So on the same sprue, his pieces we just took, there's number 25, 31 and 32. So I'm gonna snip clean and leave them there and then move on to the next one. Next one need is number 26, uh, 33 and 34. And one thing I forgot to say to you with this, see the back of it, there's a red little bit there. When you flip it around, there's a smooth part. That smooth part is the front of the model. That's what the tabard goes on to. So I'm going to sit these three off, clean them down, glue them down. I actually glued them on the base as well because it's starting to annoy me. Glue them on, sort him out, come on to the next guy. Right, so the next one needed is number 27, 35 and 36. Right, and the last one is 28, 37 and 38. Now, I made a mistake here. I just told you something and it was wrong. This bit of the front with the hole in it, that is the front of the model. The, the flat side is the back of the model. The reason I realized this mistake I made was, I'll show you the instructions how easy I made the mistake. I was looking at this piece, thinking it's a flat piece. When you actually look at a piece up there, there's a hole in the front there and it comes down to that piece. So that's a mistake I made. Now I've managed to sort it out on one. The first two, no, the glue's already took. So the white pit with the little hole in it is the front. Okay, it's not a big issue. That's the way it should be. I was wondering why the legs weren't sitting in properly, and but that is why. Right, so apart from that little cock up, with the, I just thought that was the pants. I thought it was like a, the front of their pants or something, but it's not. That's actually the back of them. That's the front there. That's what a tabard's meant to go into that bit. But anyway, so the first one, which is this guy here. So the first two I cocked up on, but the rest of them are fine. That's why he looks a little bit... He looks a little bit... Like, what way am I standing? But that explains to me now. But see, you guys won't make the same mistake now because I, I made a mistake, which is rare. But anyway, so the first guy's tabard is number 39. I'm going to snip it, clean it, show you how it goes on. And then I'll just show you who the next one is and so on and so forth. Right, so this piece actually has a little pin in there. But because I did it the wrong way around, I'm going to have to do a little bit of wizardry here and just just this bit. Right, so the next guy is number 40 which is on the same sprue so we just took 39 from here 40 is up here again I'm gonna do a bit of wizardry and just put it on Right, so this is the one I'm going to actually show you now. So 41 is the next one. So I'm going to snip it, clean it, and I'll show you how it goes on. And that's how all of them go on. Right, so the pin's on the inside there. There's a hole at the front there. It just, just goes on. Not like that. It goes in. Come on.
so I need to just take a little bit of point of connection and push it in. So I'm going to quite plastic glue. Once you get a little point of connection between the glue and the piece you want to be in, it just slots in. Next one is 42. So we just took 41 from here. 42 is up here. And the last one on, is on the other sprue with the swords on it. It's number 43. Okay, so once that's all drying, we go on to the guns now. Now, they can have a Wraith cannon, and I think the other weapon they can have is a D cannon. Now, I can't tell the difference between the two looking at them on the sprue. So I don't, you know, unless you're going to a tournament, it's not really a big issue. You have your list, you give your friend your list, this is my list. You know, as me and Mark do, I send him my list, he send me my list. Before the game, if there's any mistakes, I go, oh, hold on, that's a mistake there. It should be this or it should be that. You know, usually usually mistakes on a list is usually just going to be something like I've given them the wrong gun option or I've forgotten to put a hunter killer missile on the Rhino or, you know, that sort of thing. But it's not a big issue. The Wraith Cannon is the one I'm going to go for all the time because that is absolutely disgusting. It's only one shot a piece. Um... It's forced to hit, but you put a spirit seal with them and it, it gives them plus one to hit, so it makes it freeze to hit. Gives them lethal hits as well. The rape cannon has devastating wounds as well, so you're getting lethal hits and devastating wounds. You get to reroll one to hit roll dice and one to wound roll dice per phase. So that's that's already straight away really good. And I think the Wraith Cannon, I think it's strength 12, I think. Minus 4 AP and D6 plus 2 damage, I think. Something like that. It's absolutely an amazing weapon, but that's that's one I'm going to go over all the time. Now, any gun can go on any model. Okay, so if you're giving them the D Cannons, it doesn't matter what D Cannon you have in your hand, it can go on any model. The Wraith Cannon, same thing. Okay. But you do have to put the guns together in a specific way, with a specific arm. So the first one is number 49, which is this one here. And that goes with arm 51, which is here. If you're going with the other gun, it's number 50, which is this one here. Number 64. All of these pieces are 64. Okay, and that literally just clips in the front there. Again, with arm 51. So whatever gun you're going with, it's still going to be arm 51. If you're going with the this one, it has 64 to clips on top front there. Okay. I'm going to take this one off because I don't want to be messing around with that little piece. I'm going to take this off. And I think this one looks cooler anyway. Take this off and take the arm off, clean them down. I'm just going to put them together at the front there. Then I'll come back and show you what the next two weapons are. Right, so the next gun collection on the same sprue again, sprue we just took from. It's number 52, which is the one I'm going to be going for. Or number 53, which is the one that has number 64 go with it as well. And it's arm number 50, 54 here. So I'm going to snip those two, clean them down, put them down as a set together. Next one is 55. And 56. With the arm being 57. Again, 56 because it has to have 64 in the front there. I'm going to snip the two bits off I want, clean them down, put them to one side. Again, the next one is 58 or 59. 59 being with 64. And the arm we need for this one is number 60, which is this one here. So I'm going to snip two bits off that I want, clean them down, put them to one side. Right, so the last one is number 61, which is on the other sprue of the swords. Uh, number 62, which is this one. Again, this one, 62, has 64 to go with it. And the arm is number 63, which is this one here. So I'm going to take two pieces off that I need, clean them down, and then put them to one side. Right, so we're on the final stretch now. Now it all comes together. So what you do is take anybody, okay, I'm going to whack a bit of glue in here just to... Show it off, and I'm going to show you this one piece and then do the rest of it on all of them. Take the, the legs, the ball bit on the top, sits in there. Okay, you might have to hold it just to make it stay, but 
basically it goes in there. So I'm going to go off camera and do the rest of them and then come back to you. Right, so the next thing it's telling me to do is glue the head on. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue in this little circle piece here. So a little bit of too much there. Fit the model and it just glues on top of there. Like so. So I'm going to go off camera and do the same on all of them. Right, so any weapon arm set can go on any model. So I'm going to take the first weapon arm set. First thing I'm going to do is put a glue on his shoulder piece. Yeah. Now this is very, this should, should be very straightforward because it's a easy connection. It goes in there. Okay. So I'm going to just take my mold line scraper and that removing the body. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of glue, put a bit of glue on there, and a bit of glue up on the shoulder pad, where the other arm bit goes. You might want to give this a little bit longer than what I did because the body's still a bit movable. I'm going to put that on there. The aim is to get the arm on the shoulder bit on, on first, and then line up. Then line up this piece. It's going to want to do it like that. But if you just, this piece has come off now, so you go back and put that on. And then come in and do this one. Get it to roughly where it should be. And that's one wanted to come apart as well. Damn it. So we do it the other way. Some come off, of course it has. So we get this one on. Now this is very fiddly at the, to start with. Once this once the plastic glue starts to take, it just goes boss straight on. Put this back in the arm there. Damn it. Right, so after flapping around a bit, we get it to this sort of stage where I'm holding it in sort of in position. Now, I'm not going to sit and hold it for hours. What I'm going to do is, as the glue starts to take, it starts to get a bit stronger. So then what I do is I look around. That shoulder looks in nice. The wrist isn't on properly, as you can see. But this shoulder's in nice. So then what I do is, Come, come along, and I use my mold line scraper and just try and manoeuvre this arm. Come on, you stupid! Try and manoeuvre this arm so it just it's going to be a pain in the ass. So there's a bit of play on it. That's almost there from the wrist. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep trying to push that into place there with the mold line scraper. Just keep trying to tease that a little bit. Now, worst case scenario, I put a little bit of plastic glue there and that seal that joint. You won't even notice it because all you'll see is that. Okay, so I'm going to just keep cracking on with that and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, so that's... Yeah, that's that's ninety five percent, ninety six percent there. It's not, it's not spot on, but it's a pain in the ass because this. So what I'm going to do is leave it for a few more. Well, I've left it for a few more minutes. Got frying the mold line scraper everywhere. What I'm going to do now is come in and just gently see that. Now it's perfect. That's perfectly lined up. And 
No, it's gone down a little bit more. So what I have to do is just give it a gentle, gentle tap out. There we go. No, it's gone out again. Come on, yeah. What are you doing? There we go. I know just a minute or so there to show you that. But the, I think the biggest problem with this, trying to do this one, this is a safe point to hold it as well, is that the body's still a little bit wet into the pin. So it's a little bit pliable. So as I'm putting the arms on, the body's trying to move and then it's pushing the arms off. So when you put the bodies on and the heads on, give it maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes and then start doing the arms. Obviously, the further I go down, the easier it's going to get because the glue uh, on the body is taking a little bit more. So I'm going to go off camera and just do the rest of them. Again, each gun set can go on any one, doesn't matter. But it goes on, the best way to do it is try and do it the same way. Now, it should be really straightforward because this is a flat, flat connection. And the arm is a flat connection. So it should just slot on. Okay, nice and easy. But I said that's why the best way the best thing to use is plastic glue. So you do have a bit of time to let it set a little bit and then just play around with it until you get happy where you are. Right, and there we have it. Now I'm gonna bring you down and show you some pretty pictures in a minute. Um putting those arms on is always a pain in the backside. I wouldn't go with super glue because you don't have any play time. So if you put super glue on, say the small arm, glue that in. And then when you're trying to glue the other arm on, if it's slightly off, you don't have any space to manoeuvre the small arm down. Whereas plastic glue gives you a bit of time to move the stuff around. Now, we, apart from the mistake that I made on the, the the little middle torso part, legs part, his hip part, shall I say, because I looked at the instructions wrong, and the first two, that's on them, but you don't notice, you won't notice that now. Apart from that, the only difficult part of this model is putting the arms together. But I do believe the best way to do it, when you glue the bodies on and the heads on, leave it for 10, 15 minutes, maybe even half an hour, because the bodies, the bodies are solid then. Then come back, put the little arm on, and do it the way I showed you, but maybe put the little arm on with plastic glue, leave it for 10 minutes, and then start putting the other arm on, because the small arm then is a bit more solid on the connection on the shoulder. So then when you join, you when you got time to take your mold line scraper and just, you know, manoeuvre it into place and just keep tapping it into place until it connects on. Drop a little bit more glue if you need to, but apart from that, the biggest problem with these arms is the shoulder pads. You know, um, you could have, you could have been, they could have been done in a way where you put shoulder pads on after the arms. You know, but apart from that, that's not that's not even you know a big issue because two, putting two handed weapons on are always a pain in the backside. But apart from that, absolutely fantastic. Now there is a few mold lines that I saw that I've missed on this kind of leg here at the front. But again, splendid sponge afterwards when it's all fully dry and it's one complete piece of plastic, not a problem. Difficulty range for these guys, I would give them a three. The only difficult thing on them is the gun which is, you know, a bit of patience, a bit of time, which is something I don't have patience of, you're, you're fine. For me, I can't sit here for half an hour holding it. And then the next one, next one, I just want to get, I just want to get them done. I'm glad there's no pin and hole on, on the arms, as some, some weapons do, the Guardians, for example, where it's a tiny little pin, tiny little hole, and it's a really small, tiny connection point. I'm glad it's just a flat piece against a flat piece. 
it's a difficult round of three for these guys. So the only thing that I would have done differently if I had designed these guys in, you know, the screw form is I would have put the shoulder pads on afterwards. You know, same like a space marine, the shoulder the pauldrons going afterwards. But apart from that, these are absolutely fantastic. I actually I'm looking forward to getting the Eldari army up to two thousand points. I'm looking forward to putting it on the table. I'm actually thinking now of getting another five of these guys and a spirit seer to go with them. Because they are very, very tasty in, in game in rule terms. And the models look absolutely amazing as well. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. Any comments or suggestions or anything, chuck them below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button because it costs you absolutely nothing. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. Everyone smash the thumbs up button so it triggers YouTube to share this video with more and more people and makes this amazing community of you guys grow even more. So I'm going to bring you straight down and show you some pretty pictures. But until next time, guys, take it easy.